Hey guys, I'm Kyle Vorbach, and Star Wars has released what is probably its final trailer for Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. There's a lot to talk about here, some stuff that proved our past theories correct, and details about new characters and which of them might die. So let's break down all of these missable details and make some final predictions. Here we go. Jin, whatever I do, do it to protect you. So you understand? I understand. So we start off with this flashback of Krennic and the Death Troopers finding Galen Erso, and we see this shot of Jin hiding in the reeds, which kind of implies Galen made her escape so Krennic couldn't use her as leverage to make him work for them. This also kind of confirms our theory that Galen Erso is kind of an Oppenheimer figure, which means he's taken by Orson Krennic to build the Death Star, but he later regrets creating essentially a weapon of mass destruction like the nuclear warheads Oppenheimer created. His desire to protect Jin here shows that Galen looks like he's actually a good guy, which explains explains him leaking the Death Star info to the Rebels. My prediction is that, you know the exhaust pipe on the Death Star that is incomprehensibly stupid to have there and they use it to blow it up in A New Hope? Well, what if Galen was the one who put it there and then he gave the plans to the Rebels like, hey, let's blow this thing up. So the long running joke about the Death Star's vulnerability may finally be justified here. Another important thing to note here is the new music that we're hearing in this trailer. Now, since the last trailer came out, I believe uh, Michael Giacchino had to replace Alex Alexander Desplat as the composer on the movie. So here we're hearing the force theme, but it's being played with vocals, perhaps like a young girl's voice, which kind of reflects Jin Erso as a young girl in this flashback. Now check out the scenery here. This really looks like an alien landscape. This location is actually in Iceland. It's at this beach by the mountains of this and this, east of the village of Vik, V-I-K, I could say that one. Now let's zoom in on Krennic here. Look at his Imperial insignia. He just has the six red squares, which means general. Now, because this is a flashback, later on in the trailer, we see him with six red and six blue, which means admiral, but let's move on. So here we see Jin waking up violently from this nightmarish memory. The editing makes it look like she's having this memory in Imperial custody right before she's broken out by the rebels and assigned to the mission. But judging by the shakiness of the shot and the lighting coming from behind, as opposed to from the front in the next jail cell shot, this means that this scene takes place later on, like in the later scene on the cruiser when she looks out the window being transported by the rebels. Therefore, Rogue One probably won't begin with a flashback. This flashback will happen later in the first act after she joins up with the rebels. So why is Jin in Imperial jail? Most likely for the list of crimes we heard in the first teaser. Forgery of Imperial documents, possession of stolen property, aggravated assault, resisting arrest. We see her cellmate here, who's kind of like a weird Cthulhu looking thing, or Davy Jones from the second Pirates movie. Let me do an impression. Jin Alsa. <laughs> Terrible. They look like they're being transported together later on, so maybe they got into some sort of trouble together. Who knows? So if you look in the background behind the stormtrooper outside the cell, there is several floors of cells. So this looks like it's just a massive prison facility. And the rebels broke in here to get Jin out. So that seems like Jin is really important to the rebel cause. Next, we see the occupation of Jedha. We see this interesting looking shiny droid in the bottom left of the frame. And the frame leads your eye to the cool looking looming Star Destroyer overhead. But if you look closely on the bottom right before the camera moves up, there's an ATST, which we see later on in the trailer. This is cool because one of Rogue One's challenges is to feel and look like a Star Wars movie. And with all new characters and no lightsabers or Jedi, this is kind of a really tough thing to do. So this trailer really tried to include more Star Wars iconography like the ATST, you know, the Star Destroyers, the X-Wings, and weird problems with your dad. I should be in Star Wars. After this, we see Jin freed, but not from the same prison cell we saw before. This is on an Imperial cargo ship. Rebels have hijacked it, maybe during transport or during a stop somewhere. We hear Cassian Andor say, you wanna get here? His voice is muffled under the sound of ears ringing, which is a cool detail to show this explosion has affected Jin physically, which is another example of Gareth Edwards grounding this movie in the realism of battle. We see the red light go to a green light on the Imperial cuffs that Jin is wearing, meaning he's unlocking them. But in the first teaser, 
here. Jin is back in cuffs being escorted by the rebels. We see her walking into that hangar. My prediction is that shortly after Cassian takes off these Imperial cuffs, Jin's gonna try to escape on her own and then Cassian will have to subdue her and put cuffs back on. I don't think they're gonna trust each other until later in act one. So also look in the background of this handcuff shot. You can see another prisoner in shackles, which kind of looks like the cellmate from before, Mr. Davy Jones Cthulhu boy. Similar hands and hint of tentacle face up on top. He's also in the left of the frame as the door explodes. Fingers crossed he's our new Jar Jar Binks character. Anyways, moving on. Our rebellion is all that remains to push back the Empire. We think you might be able to help us. When was the last time you were in contact with your father? What is this? Here we see this super interesting shot of the Ewing flying over the Jedi rock formation, which is a massive sculpture of a Jedi. This shot may actually come right before that wide shot of the Ewing flying past the plateau in the last trailer. But this statue thing is really piquing my interest here. It's kind of similar to the statues outside the Jedi temple on Coruscant, rest in peace. But look at this statue here, honestly. It's in ruins now. Like it once stood tall in front of the plateau, protecting it. And you see the lightsaber blade is broken. As we all know, lightsaber blades are generated from kyber crystals, which is the reason the Imperials are on this planet, because they're trying to grab the kyber crystals for the Death Star. So that's some symbolism right there. The crystal's sacred use for the lightsabers is now over. Now they're being corrupted for the new evil purpose of powering the Death Star super laser. Anyways, let's move on. It appears he is critical to the development of a super weapon. We now know that this rainy, rocky planet is called Yadu. Do you know what this planet is called? Yadu. Okay, two things to point out here. One, I just realized I've been calling them Galen Erso this whole time instead of Galen Erso. And two, we see Galen Erso on this planet, meaning the battle scenes we've seen from other trailers in this location are probably part of a rescue mission to retrieve Galen. We also see Krennic now has his full Admiral insignia, meaning this takes place years after that first shot of the two of them together. Krennic probably got his promotion by using Galen to create the Death Star, like his career has been on the back of all of Galen's work. And like many new nuclear physicists, Galen probably didn't know how his research was gonna get used. Probably why he looks like a little sad boy in this scene. Galen is also wearing a uniform here as well, but he has no insignia, so he works for the Empire, but he has no military rank, like a scientist or a slave or something. And look at this look of contempt that Krennic is giving Galen right here. Whew. Damn, he is PO'd with an exclamation mark. This could be after he found out that Galen leaked info to the rebels and he has to come punish and torture him or something. We see another epic shot of the Death Star and this planet here may be Scarif, which is where the Death Star is being constructed. I don't think it's Jeddah because when we see the Death Star approach Jeddah in the other trailer, it was upside down and orbiting very quickly. In this shot, it's not even moving. Now, I don't think this is the case, but this does kind of look like the Death Star is being launched from the planet. It's kind of like popping up out of it almost, which Reminds me of how in Halo 3, the Halo rings are launched from the Ark, which is an artificial shield world that existed for the sole purpose of making Halos, which is kind of like Scarif. So this could be the Death Star being launched off the planet's surface into orbit, or it could be behind the planet, and I have no depth perception. Anyways, moving on. If my father built this thing, we need to find him. All right, how many do I need? They are requesting a call sign. It's, um, rogue. Rogue One. So Jin now has her whole crew, Bodhi Rook, Baze Malbus here at Imwe, and we hear her say, If my father built this thing, we need to find him. This seems to be taking place after the Jedi portion of the movie. I mean, look how upset Jin is. It looks like they just saw the Jedi plateau get destroyed and now they're very shaken. Also, notice the window behind Cassian here. It's flashing blue light that looks like hyperspace, which we know they use to escape Jedi. Some are saying the background kind of looks like Yadu, but I think they're all wrong. My prediction is that Jin and Cassian go to Jedi to talk to Saw Gerrera about how Jin's father Galen might be involved with all of this and where he is. Then the Empire strikes by testing the super laser on the plateau. Everyone barely escapes. Maybe someone doesn't. Then they head to Yadu to find Galen. I'll come back to who doesn't escape in a second. We see Bayes saying, How many do I need? Is he talking about soldiers willing to go on a suicide mission with him? We also see this interaction between K2SO and Bodhi. They are requesting a call sign. It's, um, Rogue. 
Rogue One. Outside the ship, it looks warm and sunny, which kind of looks like Scarif. I think that K2SO and Bodhi are using their Imperial credentials to land on Scarif to steal the Death Star's plans, which confirms our past theory that this is Bodhi's purpose on this mission. Also, the obligatory saying of the title of the movie and dialogue, you know, like we've been doing in the past three videos we've made about this, but this is also serving a purpose. A lot of people don't really understand what Rogue One is or means. Why is it called that? Oh, it's the name he gives the ship that brings death to the Empire, like the Enola Gay in World War II. By what we see of Bodhi's look at Jin, she inspires him in the moment to give it that call sign. She's a rogue, so that's the name he comes up with in this moment. But it's also fitting that he's the one to say it because he's an Imperial officer who has gone rogue. So in a way, we're all the rogue one. Huh? Moving on. The power that we are dealing with here is immeasurable. Look at this awesome shot of this super shiny floor reflecting Darth Vader looking out the window as the Death Star approaches Jeddah. Darth Vader's profile is so iconic, that's all you need. That and some, you know, like super powerful floor wax. But it's really cool because it's kind of like the shadow of Vader's growing over Jeddah that looks like it's in flames. Vader's evil presence overtaking the wreckage of the ancient Jedi tradition. And here we see Krennic arguing with Vader. Power that we are dealing with here. Why is he arguing with Vader? I mean, this might be keeping with Vader's general skepticism of military might, like in A New Hope, with Vader force choking Admiral Mahdi when he got too arrogant about the Death Star's superior firepower. Like, Vader's all about the force, you know, not, you know, military might. We also see Imperial officers gazing upon Jeddah on the Death Star, and a figure is walking up to Krennic. You can see Krennic in the background here wearing white. We actually saw him in this scene in the last trailer. But who is this guy walking up to him? Other officers turn around to look at him in respect or fear, kind of like clearing a path. This could be young Tarkin relieving Krennic of his command, summoning him to Vader. Also, young Tarkin is my rap name. Anyways, we see the screen showing a satellite view of Jeddah's surface, which kind of looks like a military drone strike view. Now, what is that shape in the center there? Could that be the Jeddah Plateau, like that dark inner thing with the Star Destroyer over it? Let's move on. If the Empire has this kind of power, what chance do we have? We have hope. Rebellions are built on hope. And here's our rebel meeting. This seems to be taking place kind of towards the midpoint of the movie, maybe after Jeddah and or Iadu, or when the rebels rally and launch an attack on Scarif. Bodhi Rook is standing behind Jin, so this must be a good ways into the movie. Now around the table, clockwise, we got Mon Mothma, Cassian Andor, General Draven, Jan Dadana, Bail Organa, Senator Jebel, Jin Erso, another rebel senator, and a black rebel senator. So there's diversity now. Now we know that this is Bail Organa because the reverse shot of this meeting in the celebration footage shows that that the person to the left of Jan Dadana is Jimmy Smits. And we have a new character who is Senator Jebel, played by Jonathan Eris. You might know him from playing Anderson on Sherlock. Also watching this meeting is Biston, the furry guy firing the mounted gun in the celebration footage who laughs like, <laughs> and two white shelled Mon Calamari. We get a better look at them on the trading cards released for this movie. They're from Mon Cala, the same planet as Admiral Akbar. And it's cool, the hologram of the Death Star looks old school. It's all shaky and glitchy, like the Leia hologram in A New Hope. And that's the attention to detail that is super awesome about this movie. It really shows the rebels are really operating on scraps here. We see an ATST attacking militia on Jeddah. The effects on it look awesome. It's so much better than the stop motion movement from Return of the Jedi. I think that's a real ATST. Now at the beginning of this shot, Jin is the person to the far left exiting frame. And there's this big furry creature running for cover with like that big pack on him. His name is Moroff. He's a mercenary who wears a respirator to help him breathe. He might be aligned with Saw Gerrera, which leads me to my question about this. What is going on in this battle? Could this be Saw Gerrera mobilizing his militia to fight against the Empire occupation, kind of like the French Resistance? And we get this crazy new look at Saw Gerrera. This is why he needs that walking stick. His feet are mechanical, and he's like a full-on breathing suit. He must have been severely injured during his battles with the Empire. Also, this might be a little on the nose, but Jin says, Rebellions are built on hope. You know, like the rebellion from A New Hope, because we're all the rogue ones. Moving on. They have no idea we're coming. Take hold of this moment. The force is strong. Make ten men feel like a hundred. Look at this 
awesome wide shot of Scarif. It's way more industrialized than previous footage has shown us. The empire is really built into this jungle with like a massive structure and several channels leading to it. What is that big structure? Like the base of a satellite tower. That's what I'm thinking at least. Some people online are also saying it could be a piece of the Death Star super laser before it had been put into place. I don't know about that. The launch pad shown at the bottom of the frame could be the same location where we see the Imperial cruiser explode in past trailers. I'm gonna come back to this ship in a second because that's kind of an important plot point here. We see Jin, Cassian, and K2SO in disguise sneaking onto the Imperial base. This confirms that this is Scarif, not the Death Star. How do we know? Look at the hull of the ship as they walk into this tunnel. Look at the orangish panel thing there. That's the same ship that explodes on Scarif in the last trailer. Still coming back to that. So we may not see Jin and company sneak onto the Death Star. This may just be the underground base there. We see some more of the Iadu battle. Bays and Chirrut watch as X-Wings fly by. We got these guys, Edrio and Benthic, the two tubes twins. They're mercenaries from the empire-occupied world of Yartanga. Like Moroff, they could be working with Saw Gerrera's militia. And they have more breathing devices, because everyone in this militia has asthma. Or if you want an actual theory, maybe the desert air is hard to breathe. I prefer that they're like, where's my inhaler? <laughs> and again, check out this crashed X-Wing. We've pointed this out in past trailers, but I think that this X-Wing was part of a rebel struggle to stop the empire from occupying Jeddah, which is why we see rebel pilots in shackles on Jeddah and other trailers. And this battle on Yadu, really Really is bigger than we thought, honestly. They're, now we're seeing several Y-Wings bombing stuff on these big rock formations. I'm really interested in where that's gonna go, but let's move on. We'll take the next chance. And the next time. Your rebels on you? Now we're seeing more of this Scarif battle. We see Chirrut firing this really cool looking weapon. Look at this thing. It kind of looks like a Wookiee bowcaster, like we saw Chewie use in the original trilogy and in The Force Awakens. <laughs> But look at this, it like the arms extend out, which kind of is like if the bowcaster is kind of the crossbow in the Star Wars universe, this looks like it's the longbow of the Star Wars universe. And it fits because Chirrut is kind of the guy who would use a longbow. And here's an important thing. Look at this shot of Bodhi in the Scarif battle. He looks wounded, doesn't he? If he is, that may give some meaning to this next shot of him charging into the ship. Same one with the orangey hull we talked about earlier. Notice that he's holding something in his hand. It looks like a rope like, or cables or something. Here's my bold prediction. This is where Bodhi Rook dies, right here in this moment. Like, this shot is him coming to terms with his death right before he decides to run in and blow up this Imperial ship. And we've seen this Imperial ship blow up in other trailers, and the explosion is massive. Like, there were bombs brought on board or something. But why would Bodhi blow it up? And it, does he kill himself doing it? Maybe it contains kyber crystals or secrets of the Rebels location on Yavin 4? There has to be something really important on that ship. Or maybe Maybe there's just a ton of stormtroopers on there and he just wants to clear a path for the escape for the rest of the crew with the plans. And here we go, look at this. I didn't think that this was gonna even be in this movie, but here is a giant space battle with X-Wings. My theory is that this is actually gonna be the opening for the movie. Maybe these X-Wings are flying and they discover the Death Star as it's under construction and they're like, oh my God, we need to assemble a group of people to take this thing out. An alternate theory is that this could be at the end of the movie during the Scarif battle when the Death Star's plans are transferred from Jin's party to Leia Organa's group. And look in the background here. What are those other ships back there? There's that rounded ship on the right, which kind of looks like a Mon Calamari cruiser. This other ship looks like a Hammerhead cruiser. That's a ship from Knights of the Old Republic. And a version appears in Star Wars Rebels. One of Leia Organa's plot lines actually involves those ships. But to be clear, it's not the ship she appears on at the beginning of A New Hope. That's a Corellian Corvette. Ooh, I know my Star Wars ships. <laughs> We see this explosion on Iadu. This could be part of the battle with this coming from a Y-Wing bombing raid. Look closely at the figures surrounding this explosion. Stormtroopers, a few death troopers, and on the far left, we see Krennic in white diving away, which I'm so glad he's wearing white. It's making finding him in these trailers really easy for us. But the man standing directly to the left of the explosion could be Galen. My theory is that Krennic has learned that Galen leaked info to the rebels, came to punish him, and during this, the rebels arrived to attack and free Galen. All of this is happening at once. Or Galen knew that Krennic would come for him and he set up an explosion to go off below this platform to blow them all to bits. Almost like, consider this the day you almost caught Captain Galen Erso. Moving on. Save the rebellion. Save the dream. Okay. 
Okay, there's so much crazy stuff in this final section here. We see the Jedha Plateau getting absolutely wrecked. We see similar lightning like in the dust cloud like we mentioned in the last video. Now, who is this in the foreground here? Jin? Bodhi? A Claire Temple cameo? This person has long hair like Jin, but in the last trailer, it seemed like their ship was taking off as the plateau was crumbling around them. Maybe this destruction is heading their way and they're like, oh, we gotta get out of here and they hop on. And more importantly, look what's around this person. Look at these old ruins. These could be ancient Jedi ruins because as we know, Jedi is the homeworld of the Jedi. And they look like the ruins found on the ancient Sith homeworld of Korriban like we've seen in Knights of the Old Republic and some of the extended universe stories. And here we have the clearest shot of Darth Vader we've seen yet as he approaches Krennic very angrily. He looks like he's walking on an off ramp from a ship. This foggy, smoky effect is cool. And again, it starts with Vader's outline. So this may be our first epic glimpse of him in Rogue One. What I'm thinking is that Vader has come here to execute Orson Krennic out of anger for him allowing the Death Star's vulnerability to leak. And this could be possible considering Orson Krennic doesn't appear at all in the later Star Wars movies, unless he's Snoke. But if he did come here to execute Krennic, that would place this shot at the end of the movie, considering past trailers show Orson Krennic walking in the aftermath of the Screef battle. Now we have this rainy shot of Galen on his knees looking up in defeat at Krennic. Looks like he's in pain, honestly, like Krennic just hurt him. But this could be the moments after that explosion went off earlier, and Galen is disappointed that his plan to take out himself and Krennic didn't work. And here's another really important thing that we see in this trailer. Look at Saw here. It looks like his home is collapsing around him. My theory is that Saw's home is located in the ruins we see located far away from the plateau. So when the city gets blown up, Jin's watching from there. And then she has to leave Saw behind and these are his final words. Save the rebellion, save the dream. And Saw freaking dies here. Side note, this kind of reminds me of save the cheerleader, save the world from heroes. Save the cheerleader, save the world. Save the cheerleader! Save the world! And we close this out with more of the Scarif battle. We see the Ewings attacking the AT-ACTs. The AT-ACT on the far right has its brown cargo bay doors open. These are meant to carry large cargo. You know, like cargo bay doors. The last shot here is we see Baze and Chirrut running from the AT-ACT as it stomps through the jungle around them. Feels kind of like Jurassic Park or that one sequence from uh, Peter Jackson's King Kong where they're running from the Brontosauruses. And that's the end of the trailer, which is probably gonna be the last trailer we get before Rogue One comes out in two months. And from what I can tell, this movie is gonna be awesome. I mean, the visuals are amazing. There's this high stakes story where anyone could die. I mean, none of them are guaranteed to be in later Star Wars movies. And there's some great action with the Death Star and these war scenes and hopefully Darth Vader getting in on that. I'm really looking forward to covering everything about this movie. And one of the big reasons we could even make videos here at New Rockstars is our sponsor, Loot Crate. Loot Crate is a monthly subscription box service that hooks you up with all sorts of cool gear from all the nerdy stuff we like to talk about at this channel, including Star Wars. You could sign up right now by going to lootcrate.com slash rockstars. Each month has a theme and this month's theme is speed, which I just got the box right here and I think we should open it, shall we? Honestly, it is less than 20 bucks a month, and if you use our promo code ROCKSTARS, you get 10% off. And we at New Rockstars are doing a bonus giveaway where you can win the box that I just opened right here. All you gotta do is go to loopcrate.com slash ROCKSTARS, sign up, and then tweet at us that you signed up and what you're most excited about for Rogue One. Okay, that's it. Uh, if you like this video, please hit like and make sure to subscribe to New Rockstars and share this video. Spread the good word of NR, as we like to say. Also, shout out to our Patreon contributor, Kelly Hopper. Kelly Hopper! Hopper, get to the chopper! It's a fun thing to say. I just kind of really wanted to say that. But thank you, we can't make these videos without you, our beautiful Patreon people. You guys are making all these videos possible. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Kyle Vorbach, with any questions about this stuff or questions about my sanity. Or you can follow New Rockstars on Twitter, at New Rockstars, to keep up with us and when our videos are coming out. Okay, that's it. Uh, I'm gonna go hit the gym. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna work out uh, with, with weights. I'm gonna go lift weights to get muscular more so than I already am. So definitely gonna go do that and not gonna go play Xbox for 10 hours.